Good afternoon, it's Lee here from Walking Derbyshire and today you're joining me in Calver for another walk. Um, so the walk we've got planned out today, we're going to start from here next to the Calver Cricket Pitch and we're going to head up the A623 until we meet Coombsdale and then we're going to head up Coombsdale, going to go up about a third of the way and then turn right and climb out over the high fields and then drop down into Dalton Quarry. I'm going to cut through the centre of Dalton Quarry because it actually splits into two. Head back down to the A623, head up to Eam. I'm going to have a look around there and then head out east past the boundary stone, drop back down to Stoney and then head back to Calver. So we're off. Thing, the, the cricket pitch at Calver, I think it's the oldest in the Peak District. It goes way back. Now I think I'm going to drop into the spa just on the corner here because I haven't got anything to eat on me today. It's a really busy road this one, the A623. Goes all the way up to the A6 just above Buxton. Passes through Stoney, past Wardlow Myers, Tidewell. And get to the beginning of Crestbrook from here as well from this road. But yeah, it's very, very busy. Lots of lorries and because there's a lot of quarries around here. Originally there's a lot of mining um, around Calver, as many places in the Peak District. Just see Frog Edge in the distance there. Right, so just, just about to cross. Let's go from across here. So this is an alternative car park if you wanted to do this walk. It's actually a bit closer to Coombsdale, next to the playing fields. I always prefer parking up there on Sow Lane. We've got the cafe and the Don't Water Arms as well, which is a, a nice pub to finish on a, a half a pint to celebrate your walk. So this is it, we're heading into Coombsdale now. Looks like this has been redone since I was last here, it's been relaid. Fresh fresh tarmac or something. Um, looking nice and smooth. But yeah, look at look how gorgeous it is. One thing I love about Coombsdale is it's not as well known as some of the other more popular dales and some stunning trees, lots of ash trees and when spring really kicks in and it gets carpeted with flowers it's absolutely stunning down here. So if you carry on all the way to the end of this Coombsdale you eventually get to Longstone Moor and that's kind of north of Great, Great Longstone and you've got Longston Edge, and there's a lot of history up there, a lot of mining activity, but also I think there's been ancient monuments found up there, so it suggests there's been civilizations that used to camp out up there many thousands and thousands of years ago. There's a path cutting back down to Stony. We're continuing on. Look at these stunning limestone cliffs and rock formations. There's still that beautiful yellow flower on the gorse. It's so peaceful down here. I'll tell you what, it's hot coming up here. It's about 10 degrees, but when that sun's on you, it is warm because it's a gentle incline. Right, so this is where we're coming off. Climb out of Coombsdale, probably foot path. This is one steep climb now, all the way to the top of the high fields. But before we go up there, because we're not far, there is an entrance to an old mine. It was shot in the 90s, so relatively modern, but though it did go back a couple of hundred years, called Salit Hole Mine. It's all boarded off now a big steel door and there's um, water still flooding out of the mine even today so we'll go and, we'll go and check that out I think it's all properly sealed off so we can't get in but worth having a look as we're close by an interesting fact for you at the top of this Coombsdale there was a lane called Black Harry Lane and that was where 
He used to be a highwayman and he used to rob people who were on the turnpike route from Bakewell north. And yeah, he was quite feared, 18th century. Uh, he was eventually caught by the Castleton Constabulary and then hung, drawn and quartered. I think on the uh, near Wardlow Myers in, in a gibbet. Bloody hell, what we used to do back in the day, eh? Right, up and out of here. It doesn't take too long before these stunning views are revealed. I mean, we saw these at the start of the walk, but yeah, got Baslow Edge and then Kerber Gap, Kerber, Froggart. Behind that, you've got White Edge. Camera probably won't pick this up, but right over there, you've got that Lonesome House. Is that a National Trust? I know you can rent that out, I think. You follow it around, get to Longshore, Higgator, Stanley's Edge. But yeah, we won't see those today because we're heading over that way. Still got a bit of a climb to go. Let's crack on. There's a mention on the sign back down there about skylocks hanging around here. Yeah, and you can hear them climbing high, descending down. Ah, it's a proper, proper sound of summer that is. Nearly at the top now. Like I say, it's one big climb out of that Coombsdale. No let up at all. But we're starting to see, I believe, there's a few sort of hillocks and things. Evidence of lead mining. As I get older, I fall more and more and more. It's Easter holidays now. I've not seen anyone. Just entering the Aurori Stones, I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it, but it's fascinating. It's just rocky outcrop in the middle of this field. I don't know a lot of about them. If you're watching this and you have got any information about these stones, it'd be fascinating to know. So please leave a comment below. I'm just approaching some of the quarries now. So over this side behind me you've got, this is Goddard's quarry, behind that you've got the cliffs at Stony, which is great for climbing, some great caving in there, some old mine entrances, all of this area is full of lead mines. Here you've got Dalton quarry, it's actually split into two and this was where last year they launched a, a huge locomotive off decide for film Mission Impossible Tom Cruise. So from here we're going to hit this lane, walk along a bit down here and then there's a cut in that cuts through the quarry, Dalton Quarry. There's Dalton 1 and Dalton 2 as I mentioned. I'm going to drop down to the A623 and then continue up to the beautiful village of Eam, the plague village from 1665 to 1666. So much history in Eam, and then we're going to head along the ridge here, heading out east, and then along this bit is the, the boundary stone, and that's where, well we'll talk about that in a bit, 
Um, also up here on this hillside is Riley, Riley's graves and they were a uh, victim to the plague. We're not going to see those today because we're not heading up that way. So actually this field here that the film crew were all stationed up and that's where the locomotive was sat and there was a lot of hype around this back in the day it was uh it was good fun something to something to keep an eye on uh, just on the horizon there there's a nice pub barrel in in breton if ever up that way in fact we've got another little walk on the website e more and more and that goes up over e more around the back loops back up to to breton if you fancy checking that out Right, information board, let's go and have a look. Here we go, here's that Black Harry's Lane that I was talking about, it's this here. If you continue over, that gets you to the edge of Coombsdale. So, what else we've got? Yeah, mentioned the Boundary Stone, there's Riley Graves. Cavendish Mill, that's, I don't know, about half a mile up here. Now don't get excited because you probably think, oh, nice old mill. No, not at all. It's basically a, a dirty factory. In fact, last time I was up there, it looked like there was a load of pollution pouring out into the road, which, yeah, I wasn't best pleased about. But, um, yeah, sounds great, doesn't it, a mill, Cavendish Mill, but, um, no, I mean, it goes back. Don't get me wrong. Still, still in operation today. Crushing floor spar together. But, no, it's, um, that makes it look pretty, trust me. Just seen two ravens flying overhead, heading into the quarry. So they may have a nest down here, who knows. Dalton quarry number two. This can be quite popular with climbers, especially on these back cliff, cliffs here. And that's your horseshoe quarry there. And this lookout point here is fantastic. If you're over that side, brilliant views up there. So just to the right, we've got that Dalton quarry. Just being a little bit careful because down in the woods here, huge husky running around on its own. There's nobody about. So, hopefully I won't get attacked. I don't know where it's gone. Like I say, there's nobody about, so I'm a bit concerned that it's either lost or, I don't know. Anyway, can't see it anymore. So about here, there's the structure. The locomotive went off. Mission impossible. Amazing. Right. I ain't sticking around to get bitten. Let's head on down to the A623. Look at this absolute beautiful example of a lime kiln. So this one. It's Georgian, Victorian, goes back hundreds of years. Obviously with the quarry being close by, probably used to have horse and cart take away the quick line that was produced back in the day. This is a classic beehive example. This nice wooden lintel here, absolutely amazing. This archway, this is like the archway and the draw hole at the bottom. So used to pile the top limestone and coal, limestone coal in layers and burn it to about 900 degrees and leave it to turn into quicklime which could then be used as fertiliser on fields or in uh, building materials basically. Now, there used to be loads of these around all over the place but um, 
They're a rarity now, but this is a real hidden gem, this one. I'm just going to get my head torch out and we'll have, we'll have a look inside. Oh wow, look at this. Look at these little straws, calcite, forming from the water feeding through the top. Still intact. That's the draw hole. Just been to feed the fuel in. Yeah, and they would have bought it out here, put it in buckets and containers. Just before I leave this area, I just want to show you as well that up here, there's actually a lot of old workings and things going on. I mean, look at this. All up the bank here. It's like some shoots, old timber works. Maybe this is an extension of the lime kiln there. A bit tricky here with these fallen trees. All good fun though. So the impressive limestone rock to my left, I believe that's Cooklet Church. Just up here, some impressive natural cave systems in here, which we'll head up to now. We're going to have a look at. Coming up from the south side, popping out not far from Eam Hall, that Jacobean style building. And then I might try and get a cup of tea. My favourite cafe in Eam is Eam Cafe. <laughs> That's what it's called. It's on the corner. It's, um, it's, there's a few actually on the square. They have some really nice cafes, and Mine is arms is nice. That 8th century cross in that churchyard, wow, Anglo-Saxon. Allied Gate Graves. George Darby died on the 4th of July 1666, daughter Mary 20. Sad times. Gosh, can you imagine living in 1666? I mean, we put through it with coronavirus but I don't think many people survived that plague. Right let's head out of Eam, head to the boundary stone back down to the edge of Stony Middleton. So I'm just starting to feel a little bit tired now. I think the illness I think that I had yesterday it was pretty bad and yeah I felt like crap this morning and then I think the lemon sips really really helped but yeah just starting to feel it now just running out of energy I'm, hope, I'm really glad I came out though I mean look at this look at this you can't complain at all and when you got the time off work you're normally stuck in do you
There isn't a cloud in the sky now. Completely stunning. It's a little bit cloudy earlier. Really. But yeah, it's gonna be a perfect sunset tonight. So just approaching the Mandrew Stone. A couple hundred meters up here. And this is where again they used to trade money for food and resources. And the rumour has it that they used to soak the money in vinegar because they thought that, that killed off the plague. So these supposedly were the holes where they would stack the money. So if we look over in the distance we can see cutting through just over this mound here that's Coombsdale. So we climbed up over around these trees, over the tops there, dropped down past the quarries. I think we're about a mile from the end of the walk. I'll probably do one last clip before I wrap up, but um, we're just gonna have a, a low alcohol pint at the moon end before heading back along the side of the road. Well, there's a nice little path actually that runs along the side. All done, well, nearly done. Just got probably under a mile between Stony Middleton and Calver. We basically, just hugged the road on this track. Oh, it's been a lovely walk. I hope you enjoyed it if you've stayed to the end. Like I say, it's one of my favourite areas around here. It's, you don't tend to get as many people hiking around here these days. It's all Mantor and Dovedale. But yeah. This walk is on the website, I'll put a link to it in the description. There's a couple of slight alterations I made today because I wanted to do a couple of extra explores, but um, I'll add that into the description. So we've got two variants of this walk. Anyway, hope you found this enjoyable. I enjoyed it. Hopefully see you again on the next one. Take care and bye for now.